Hello, Rick. This is John McEwen. Well, I grew up in Southern California as a teenager trying to figure out what to do. I'd been working in the magic shop in Disneyland for about two and a half, three years, and I'd hear music coming out of the Wurlitzer place right next door on Main Street. It's a Main Street magic shop. I heard things like sitting in a railroad station, got a ticket for my destination, homeward bound, or blowing in the wind from Peter, Paul, and Mary. And I started getting excited about that music and got a guitar. I played guitar for about six months. And then one night, I went to a club to see the Dillards. I never heard of the Dillards before. Didn't know what a Dillard was. But I sat in that club and my hands were sweating and my legs were nervous and they jumped up on stage and Doug Dillard kicked off Hickory Hollow. And I knew that's what I wanted to do. They were the perfect combination of the Smothers Brothers and Flatt and Scruggs. Funny with great music. As the guitar was my first instrument, I was now infatuated, infatuated with the banjo. Something about its its punctuation, its staccato, its rapid-fire notes. And Doug did it perfect. I went home that first night and took the fifth string off my guitar and put on a first string to make it like the banjo's fifth string. And the next night, Rodney Dillard told me if I put an H.O. Railroad spike in at the fifth fret, I could tune it up high. So I did that. (laughs) And along the years, I started playing other instruments, driving around Southern California with a new guy that had just moved there from New York, a Puerto Rican kid, about the same age as me. Well, he told me he liked, liked the banjo a lot, but that I should play more instruments, so I started picking on the mandolin a little bit. That was Jose Feliciano. Thanks, Jose. Steve Martin and I met in Disneyland. Both of us were trying to get jobs at the magic shop, He was working in Adventureland as a stock boy, and I was just jumping over the fence as often as I needed to to get in. I got in 13 times and then got caught. Steve and I got our jobs at the magic shop, and a year or so later got infatuated with the banjo at the same time. He's nice enough to say that I taught him how to play. I did show him some things, but he has always been a uh, creative player came up with unusual tunes. This is Southern California at a time when the birds and, you know, people like um, Zappa, Led Zeppelin, I guess, was just on the horizon. The Beatles, the Doors, all kinds of people were out there. My inspiration to play the banjo might have been because it was different. The folk music thing didn't excite me too much, but bluegrass did, and blues, traditional Delta blues, like Lightning Hopkins, Memphis Slim, Blind Lemon Jefferson, and people like that, Lightning especially. I felt totally out of sync with what was going on in the area, but there was some bluegrass going on, and I went and found it. Steve is a teenager was when I encountered him, I didn't feel like neither he nor I were natural musicians. We always had to practice a lot. I practiced all the time. I usually spent about eight hours a day while I was in college playing the banjo, sometimes out in the car, sometimes in the music room at the school. I remember when Steve was playing the banjo at the end of one of his melodrama shows in Knott's Berry Farm, I thought, well, that's really cool. And then one time when I was playing, I ended up sitting in with the Greenbrier Boys, the Golden Bear. I was starting to get better. The Greenbrier Boys banjo player, Bob Yellen, had to go back to New York, and I knew all their material, so I sat in. That's where Jeff Hanna from the Dirt Band saw me play, and he told me later that he, he knew then he wished he could be in a band with me. We didn't know that would happen. My first gig, I don't know what it was, but it was solo. Oh, no, it was with my brother. My brother Bill and I played a bunch of bars, Newport Beach, and uh, 
down in that area, the Golden Bear. We did some hoot nannies. Mm. I realized from working in the magic shop that it was good to have things to say, so I tried to do use all kinds of stupid jokes. Things like when there was a heckler, hey, you want to come out to my car and smell my exhaust pipe? Or we got a magician in the audience, he just turned himself into an ass. Or things of that nature, common lines. <laughs> I, I didn't know what the hurdles were other than I didn't know enough songs. Comfortable on stage? Never. Excited about getting on? Always. And <laughs> it was always something that I, I never understood why people did drugs then because it was so hard just to get through the set and do it as good as you could. But I was nervous before going on, but not once I started. And I like that. I played a bunch of solo shows. I played with Mary McCaslin, backing her up and backing up Penny Nichols. And my first real group was with Les Thompson and a couple other guys. I had to overcome a lot of things, like trying to talk on microphone and plainly so people could hear what I was saying. My mother always said, you're bumbling too much. <laughs> she was a big help. I think doing the magic tricks in Disneyland really helped with the stage presence situation because they're demonstrating tricks all day long, usually a 10 hour shift. You'd have a different audience every 20, 30 minutes. If you messed up, you could do the same thing again and do it better. Well, that group, that first group, the, uh, oh, Wilmore City Moonshiners, named after Long Beach, California, the first name Long Beach had. That was me and Les, and that lasted six months. We might have played, actually, ten shows somewhere. Pizza parlor, restaurants, that kind of thing. Keep in mind, we're all very young. I was 17 and a half. Les was 16 or 15. He was singing and playing guitar. After we broke up, I ended up playing with Michael Martin Murphy for about six months. That was around the L.A. area. He was calling himself Michael Murphy then. We auditioned for a few things. I liked what was going on, but I didn't like being in a four-piece group that was called the Texas Twosome. I did end up on five of Michael's albums, and he's a friend to this day. I'm very proud of the playing that I did on... Carolina in the Pines and Wildfire and, and, and uh, Cherokee Fiddle, a bunch of other tunes. 